If you come from a non-African culture and you are asking yourself, why are Africans always obsessed about this history? It was in the past and we need to move on. This is why we obsess about our history is because everyone else's history has been recorded and ours has been dismissed, whitewashed, or just completely erased. It's to the point where the idea is we do not have any history at all before colonization and slavery. Whenever you hear them talk about African history, it's always the same rhetoric talking about how we were uncivilized, barbaric, backward, uncouth savages, just unaliving each other and we contributed nothing to world civilization. So our great empires and kingdoms and all our glory never existed. They were deliberate about erasing who we truly are. But we have to be even more deliberate about making sure that our true history isn't forgotten. Let us take to books and write down our history ourselves. And let us not stop there. Let's take it to the arts, making movies on African history with the right depictions. So let's talk about the fiddle for today. When you look at the history of the fiddle, you will find uh, European medieval times history, you will find the Chinese history, you will find Arab history behind it, and you will find Native American history. What is missing in this part of history is African history with the fiddle. It is Bantu history that is missing with the fiddle. It is important that if you are going to write history about other cultures, not to exclude African culture, especially when the root of that history begins and starts with African people. This is an image in Arizona um, Museum, and that's an image of a Native American and the type of fiddle that they were using. And then this image says, who made the first violin? Because fiddles and violins are interrelated. The oldest existing violin is built by Andrea Amati, right? No problem. With the help of ancient paintings, you can trace back European history by finding, um, you know, images like this, pictures like this, and they will say, it first appeared in Western Europe in the 11th century and continued to be played until the middle of the 16th century, flourishing into the 12th and 13th century. What's missing in all of these articles and this history that keeps being passed on from other groups of people to their, um, up to other groups of people and how it's written is that none of them mention the Kikuyu. These are African Bantu people and that's their one string instrument, uh, instrument which sounds like a fiddle, sounds like a violin and it's called a wandindi. So this is called wandindi, which is a one-stringed instrument played by the Kikuyu and other Kenyan communities. It consists of a string sitting on top of this bridge that transfers sound to this rabbit skin and it all gets amplified by this resonator, which can also be a, just an empty tin of something. Then it has a stick poking out of the resonator with the wire fastened on both ends of the stick and the sound is produced by bowing the string just like a violin let's not forget the accounting or a content string instrument as well as the bolon a west african traditional instrument we also have the karar from ethiopia but no, they would never admit to either have been inspired or talk about ours in history. No, our history have to die and be eradicated so their history can shine bright. We were never a continent without a history. Our history was rebranded. Oh, 
complaint video but a video to all just to start doing things differently for all our sakes and for the sake of the future generation we have to take matters into our own hands we have seen how history has been rewritten and whitewashed over time if we don't take matters into our own hands and change the narrative of lies we have going a time would come when what we have now would not even be ours our future generations are going to have nothing left because they are going to take all of it that's why, like I said, we have to take to the books and we have to take to the arts and start making movies about our true stories, cultures and traditions, our legacies. It's a deliberate erasure of black people, African people from history. And they work hard to make sure that it happens. That's why we have to work 10 times harder, if not even more, to make sure that we don't get erased. I am deliberately right now working on myself, trying to change in me the attitude of complaining all the time and thinking on how I'm going to channel that energy, redirect that energy into thinking about how can I do things differently for the sake of my people in general and for the sake of the future generation coming. How can we change the narrative and make it stick? What can we do to improve our situation and how do we go about actualizing it? And I think we all should start cultivating this mindset as well. As always, credit to this sister is down below in the description. I really do enjoy her content on TikTok. So I'll be leaving this here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's a very quick video and I think it's straight to the point. Um, yeah, let me know down below in the comment section what you think and I'll see you guys in the next one.